I'm Janelle Bray, and I'm a postdoc in Michael Levitt and Russ Altman's group for Symbios. And I study protein conformational changes, which is basically the change of a folded protein from one state to another. This often happens upon binding of a small molecule like a drug or ATP, and often there's an open state and a drug binds and it goes into a closed state. So it's important to be able to understand how those states move from one to another and even to just predict those states. And so you can look at protein motion with molecular dynamics, but often the, those motions, the conformational changes, take such a long time that we can't yet see them in molecular dynamics, especially with larger protein. And so I use something called normal mode analysis. And what normal mode analysis is, it's a method that can be applied to other things other than proteins. It's basically the natural resonant motion of a structure. So it could be of a bridge, or a guitar string, or a protein. And so you represent a protein as a series of balls with springs in between them. And then essentially you use Newton's equations of motion to calculate the overall global motion of a protein. And I'm, I'm interested in these global motions because those are the large scale motions that describe these conformational changes. And when um, the normal analysis has been around for a while for proteins, and it usually uses Cartesian coordinates, which are XYZ coordinates, but there are some issues with those, including the fact that it's not really the natural way to describe a protein. Even if you want to describe the rotation of a bond, you can't really do that in Cartesian coordinates. So I use torsion angle coordinates, and this is basically describes the protein as a series of bonds connected to each other. So if you had a bond here and here, like my arm, if you move this bond, it also moves this bond. And torsion angles take that into account. And so when you do the normal mode analysis in torsion angle space, you can get out these modes um, that do better than Cartesian describing the motion. And you, you only need a few of the low, the low frequency modes to describe the change. And so once you have these modes, and the entire motion is described as by a combination of the modes, and once you have these modes, you can use them to look at the pathway between states or predict other states, or use it to look at the movement of a large molecular machine. So I've prepared a video of calmodulin, and this is a protein that has two distinct states. And when I run the torsional normal mode analysis on it, I get the lowest frequency mode, which is which shows the most global motion. It can uh, show the motion to the other state quite well. So I want to show you this in the video. And there's one state in blue and one state in red. And calculating the modes on the blue state, you can see the motion, and it gets quite close to the red state, so it can predict this state quite well showed that it does work as well or usually better than the Cartesian modes. And so now I'm using it to really understand the pathway between these different conformations.